of all the things we've ever done for this vlog, waking up before the sun is out has to be probably number one sacrifice ever. Should be going home at this time. <laughs> 6 a.m. Got to go to LAX. And then Austin. Let's go. We finally made it after like six hours of uh, traveling, dealing with traffic, LAX, flights, hotels, rental cars. Sounds like you love all of this, huh? <laughs> yeah, like we're about to go in there and play some one three. It's gonna be a thousand max, match the stack. Hopefully we can punt enough that uh, that we can buy in for, I don't know, like at least five. Should be a good time. Hopefully at least a few interesting hands come from this and if not, I'll probably add in some other session on this vlog. Not sure what's going to come of it yet, but uh, should work out. We'll what? make sure there'll be some interesting spots. We'll one, take care. yeah. We'll take care. There will be poker, one way or another. All right, you ready? Let's go. You're gonna park right here, man. Why don't you valet? Poker Club in beautiful Round Rock, Texas. Welcome to Poker Night at the Lodge. My name is Slick Rick, along with my partner each and every week, Mike the Skull Reese. All right, here we go again, guys. Back on the Lodge's live stream, playing some 1 3 this time. This game was a $1,000 max, but it was a match the stack structure, meaning you can buy up to the biggest stack at the table. Obviously, new game, we're all going to start out with 1000 and that's all I got to say. So let's get into the first interesting hand here. Gonna start things off with a premium, looking down at Pocket Kings in early position. Playing 1-3, so I open it up to $10. Player on my left in middle position makes it 45, and there's three callers behind him. When the action gets back to me, definitely gonna be raising it up, so I make it $260. The original re-raiser folds, but the two players behind him make the call. Small blind gets out of the way, so we're gonna go three ways out of position to a flop of Ace-4-4 four, four, Rainbow. Obviously with an ace out there, not really too excited, so I'm gonna start with a check, and the action checks all the way around. Turn card definitely changes things though, it's the king of clubs, improving us to pretty much the nuts. However, even though our hand is very, very strong, of course, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of value in betting, so I decided to check it for a second time, hoping someone takes a stab at this pot, or maybe even let these guys catch up a little bit since our hand dominates the board so much. Checks all the way around again, however, so when the river comes the queen of diamonds, it seems I'm gonna to have to do my own bidding. I don't really feel like anyone here is too strong though, so I'm gonna go for a small bet, trying to get some value. Put out 260, but unfortunately, both of my opponents fold. In the next one, the double straddle is on to $12. We see an early position open to 40. Next player makes the call, and I look down at king-queen offsuit in the first straddle. I decide to squeeze with this hand, I make it 160. Early position razor folds, but the player who called behind him makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up out of position to a flop of queen-10-5 with two clubs. I think in the moment I figured he would be betting a lot of hands that maybe he shouldn't so we could go for a check race. However, he checks it back. So we're off to a turn which is the king of diamonds, improving us to top two pair. Now I'm gonna go for some value. So I make it 110 and he makes the call. So going to a river here, which is the eight of clubs. And I got a feeling from him after he called the turn bet that he was more weighted to having a draw. So I feel like the best play here is to just check and try to induce a bluff. However, he ends up checking it back and I think it's because he rivered an eight, which gave him some minimal showdown value, but enough to uh, keep him from pulling the trigger. So unfortunately he checks it back and we don't get too much value there, but still happy to take it down. Onto the next one here, which is exactly one orbit later. So once again, I'm in the $6 straddle with the double straddle on in this one. Here we see two players limp in before I look down at Jack nine off suit. Think it's worth flicking in the extra $6 and seeing if we flop something. So that's what I do. And the double straddler checks it. So four ways here to a flop, which is exactly what we were looking for. Queen 10, eight with two hearts. So we flop the nuts on a board that's got a ton of draws and different stuff available. So I think it's best to start off with the check 
and go for a check raise, try to build this pot as much as I can. And it looks like I'll get to do that because even though the player behind me checks, the next guy bets $55. Player in late position folds and now it's time to raise it up. So I make it 220. Double straddler gets out of the way, but the player who bet 55 makes the call. So heads up here, going to a turn, which is the Jack of Diamonds, unfortunately. Putting four to a straight out there, so now I think we can't really size up too much. But there's still plenty of draws that can call, and who knows, maybe some two pair combinations. So I make it 320, and once again he makes the call without really giving it too much thought. River comes off to five of diamonds. Very likely we've still got the best hand, unless he's got a hand like King-9 or perhaps even Ace-King. But once again, I think the best play is to check and induce. Very unlikely he's got a made hand that plays this way, or at least so I thought, because he ends up checking back right away with ace-queen. Now, I didn't really think he had top pair top kicker, given that he just limped in pre-flop. So obviously, seeing the cards, my check looks a little bit dumb. And honestly, maybe it is a little bit dumb, but either way, happy to take it down and move on to the next hand where there's an early position open to $15. Middle position calls in. I look down at ace-queen of spades in the big blind. Definitely going to be raising it up here, so I make it $100, and both of these players call. So three ways here, out of position, to a flop of king-jack-4 with two diamonds. Pretty good flop for me, I think. There's a king and a jack out there, and, you know, I raced before the flop, so I could have all sorts of stuff here. So I think it's worth continuing. I put in a bet of $100, trying to get it heads up, or maybe just take it down. But it turns out both players make the call, so I think I'm pretty much done with it unless we improve drastically. Queen of Hearts doesn't really qualify. Yeah, sure, we improved to second pair, but it's still not really worth betting for a second time, so I check it this time, and now the player in early position bets $300. Guy behind him folds, and now the action's back to me, and I think the way the hand's played out so far, he called a re-raise pre-flop, called a bet on the flop, and now he's betting into two players. Seems like a pretty strong line, so I'm just gonna let it go here, and it turns out that was a terrible fold because he had ace-five offsuit. Obviously seeing the cards makes all this easier, but in the moment I didn't feel like these guys were playing that wide. Little did I know, people were really gambling it up in this game. Unfortunately after this one, I didn't really pick up much for the duration of the stream, so that concluded this night, but don't worry, plenty more poker left to be played. And I actually ended up booking a profit of around $2,000 I believe. Not bad for a 1-3 game. Well, it's been about 24 hours since you guys last heard from me. We wrapped up the 1-3 session at like 1 a.m. So got to bed and today I've just been hanging out with this guy back here. Let's go! That buddy was like, you have to get right this. Now? But what's coming up next is tomorrow, Friday, we're gonna be at the Lodge playing some 2-5 or 5-10 maybe, or 1-3. We don't really know, but we're gonna go play some cash off the stream. Obviously, I'll bring you guys along for the ride. And I think that's gonna be a wrap for this particular vlog. But the one following that is gonna include the 5-10 session that's gonna be live streamed on Saturday. That's gonna be by far the biggest game we play while we're here. Uh, hopefully we avoid any disasters from this man who, uh, didn't really have a great time last time he was on that show. Who knows, maybe it'll be my time to get whacked. I know I'm overdue for a big loss, as you guys constantly like to remind me. I'd like to see one punt from you. <laughs> one punt, I'd be so proud. So without any further ado, let's fast forward to tomorrow where uh, we're gonna be playing some poker once again. Let's go. Okay, here we go guys, second session of this vlog. Playing some 1-3 again, but we're on the list for the 5-5 game, which looks like it's gonna start pretty soon. In the first hand of note, we look down at pocket queens from early position. There's a limper ahead of me, I certainly won't be doing that. I raise it up to $15. Player on my left calls, and now Ethan in late position raises it up to $70. Action gets back to me, and I'm definitely gonna be putting in the raise, it's just a question of how much. At this point, I only had around $500 in my stack since that's what I bought in for. 
As you guys know, Ethan likes to gamble it up sometimes, so might as well try to get the maximum, right? However, that's not what ends up happening. The player on my left, who originally called the 15, decides he's all in as well for a little over 500, and Ethan gets out of the way, so we do end up getting it all in, but not against the player I had in mind. I announced Queens should still be the best hand since he just flatted my race pre-flop, but it turns out that's not the case as he flips over pocket kings. A hand I definitely did not expect to see, but, uh, you know, that's alright. Sometimes queens beat kings, right? Well, not this time. I'm gonna start the session off down 500 bucks, but no problem. I add on a thousand and we move right along to the next hand where there's a $10 straddle and I look down at 6-5 of clubs in middle position. Raise it up to 30 bucks, player in late position makes the call, and now the big blind puts in the re-raise to $130. Action gets back to me, and he's only got around $700 behind. It's not really enough to justify calling with a suited connector. I'd prefer to be a lot deeper, but on the other hand, I'm stuck, and I'm here for content. Who knows, maybe we'll flop something, so let's gamble. I throw in the extra 100, and the player behind me gets out of the way, so heads up in position to a flop of 654 rainbow. The good thing about this situation, other than the fact that we flop two pair, is that this guy in particular had been playing fairly tight, so I figured if we did flop something strong like this, we could easily get it all in against an overpair, and, uh, well, you guys can probably guess where this is going, as he continuation bets $310, pretty hefty bet. He's only got around 400 left at this point, and I don't really think there's any version where he folds, so let's just get it in right now, and he quickly obliges with a call. He asks if I want to run it once or twice, and if you guys ever play with me, the answer will always be once. So here we go, off to a run out, I show it, he shows pocket sevens, which is a little surprising. I thought he'd maybe have like tens or bigger, but all the same, right? We're still ahead, though not by much. However, the turn is an ace, the river is a ten, and we hold. At this point, the five five opens up, which is an uncapped game, so I top up to $5,000, and we're going to start things off in the five five with a massive hand which was a $25 double board PLO bomb pot. In this one we're nine handed so 225 in the middle and I look down at Jack Jack 10 3 with two suits. Off to see two flops which are Queen 9 9 with a flush draw and King Jack 3 rainbow. So we flop middle set as well as an open ended straight draw on that top board. We see a small blind bet of $200. Player in middle position makes the call and I'm not done with it just yet as we've got middle set on that second board so I make the call and the button calls as well. Top on the turn is the 10 of spades and on the bottom it's the deuce of clubs. Small blind continues now for a pot sized bet of $1025. Player in the middle position announces all in for 200 more than that so 1225 total. I decided to make the call hoping that both these guys are playing the top and we end up winning half the pot with the bottom board, therefore profiting quite a bit of money. Button folds and the small blind calls the extra 200. One player is all in so myself and the small blind are playing a dry side pot. Top river card is the ace of spades and the bottom is the deuce of diamonds so we end up making a boat on the bottom board. However, the small blind doesn't seem to care too much about that because he announces all in for $2,300. A half pot sized bet, not really much decision to be had here, definitely going to be making the call. Again, just hoping that both of these guys are playing the top and pocket jacks can scoop the bottom. So I flick in the call, only scared of seeing pocket kings at this point. And unfortunately, that's exactly what we get shown as small blind flips over king king 10-6. Player in middle position shows 973 deuce. These guys are going to win a bunch of money, courtesy of yours truly. On the bright side, this is an uncapped game, so no one can stop me from adding on an extra $6,000 at this point. It's time to battle. Now at this point we play what's called a round of stand-up, which if you guys have not tried, I highly recommend. Pretty much, it's just a game where everyone stands up, and if you win a hand, you get to sit down. Last person standing has to pay everyone else a bounty. In this case, it was $50, which, if you do the math, it's quite a bit of money. Last person standing ends up paying $400 in bounties, so you definitely want to win a hand and get to sit down. In this next hand, it's not the most exciting hand, but it is significant because I'm going to try to sit the hell down when I look down at Jack 7 of spades with the straddle on. Not really the best hand to open from middle position, but a few of these guys have already gotten to sit down. And I'm starting to get a little bit desperate, so I raise it up to $30. Two players on my left make the call, 
as well as the Straddler. So four ways here to a flop of 883 with one spade. Not really looking to bluff into three people, so I check it when it gets to me and the action checks all the way around. Turn card, however, is the Seven of Diamonds, most likely giving us the best hand unless someone is trapping with an eight or pocket threes. So when the action checks to me, I think it's worthy of a bet. Deny some equity from over cards, as well as maybe get some value from worse sevens or straight draws. So I put in $50 and only the player in late position makes the call. Heads up to a river here, which is the Jack of Hearts. And I think in this case, it makes a lot of sense to bet very large for value because it looks like you're just trying to bluff and sit down. So I expect he would call very light here. And on top of that, if he makes the call and is correct, he himself gets to sit down since my opponent in this hand was still standing as well. A lot of levels here, most of which I don't understand, but long story short, I decided to bet $300. He thinks it over for a while and ends up deciding on a fold. Didn't get the value we were looking for there, but hey, at the very least, we get to sit down and we are officially in the clear for paying that $50 bounty to everyone. Moving right along to this next hand where there are only four players remaining that are still on their feet. In this one, the $40 triple straddle is on. Action folds all the way to the small blind who had already voiced his concerns about remaining standing. He opens it up for 125 and I look down in the 20 at 10-9 offsuit. Now you might be thinking, why is this hand even in the vlog? Isn't this just a fold? Well, yes. However, because he's still standing up, I predict he could be doing this with a ton of hands. On top of that, I'm also sitting down already, so I feel like my opponent would perceive me as being very strong since I really have no incentive for getting out of line. All that being said, I raise it up to $375. Player on my left in the $40 straddle folds, but when the action gets back to the small blind, he's not done with it just yet as he makes the call. So heads up here to a flop of King King Six Rainbow. He checks it over to me and I think here you can mix between checking it back and betting pretty small. This time I decide to check it back and see what happens on the turn. I could certainly still be playing hands like aces or ace king this way. However, when the turn is the king of clubs, eh, that's not really a good card because now we can't really represent a king. But at the same time, we could still have all the really strong full houses, right? My opponent seems to think not though because he quickly bets out $700 and the way he did it, the speed he did it, and the fact that he's betting this turn card at all just gave me the vibe that this was a very weak hand. So obviously if I had a pocket pair, I would just call and let him bluff the river, but now we run into the problem of having 10 high. Can't really just flat call here because if he goes all in on the river, we're obviously not gonna be able to call since all his bluffs probably beat us as well. So now I think it's time to just pull the trigger. He's got around $1,200 behind, and I highly doubt he's gonna put those chips into the middle if he faces an all in. So that's what I do, hoping that he thinks I've got pocket aces or pocket queens. Like I said, I would probably not play those hands in this fashion, but I'm just hoping he doesn't know that. And it looks like we avoid disaster, at least immediate disaster, because he does not snap call. He starts thinking it over for a while, asking what I've got, asking if I have quads, asking if I have aces, and it turns out it works because eventually he folds and ask to see the bluff. I usually don't show bluffs unless, of course, people really want to see them, so. Sorry, man. Thank you. standing up. Oh, so proud. A few minutes later, the round of stand-up officially ends. Back to playing normal poker now. In this one, I'm in the $10 straddle. There's a late position open to 45. Small blind makes the call, and I look down at pocket aces. The absolute dream when you're in the straddle. Gonna be raising it up, of course, so I make it $210. The original raiser makes the call, and the small blind calls as well. So still the three of us here going to a flop of ace, jack, deuce with two diamonds. Whew! Small blind checks, I'm gonna continue betting. Plenty of draws and worse hands that could call, so I make it 200. And both of these players make the call, which I gotta say was a little bit surprising, but of course I'm not complaining. Off to a turn which is the six of hearts, so we've still got the best possible hand. Small blind checks it over to me again. I'm just gonna continue betting, so I make it 425. This time the player behind folds, but the small blind makes the call. Off to a river which is the nine of clubs, and pocket aces are still the best possible hand on this board, so when he checks it to me, it's just a matter of how much to bet. 
Unfortunately, I have the feeling he had a flush draw, but just in case he has a hand like ace queen, I'm gonna go for a size that I think he won't be able to fold to, so I put in $900, but sadly he gets out of the way pretty quickly, so it seems like he did have a missed draw. Oh well. Off to the last hand tonight in which I'm in the $10 straddle once again. In this one, we see a $30 open from the button, and now the small blind raises it up to $90. Action gets to me and I look down at pocket tens. Now, as you guys probably know, I'm not really a fan of just cold calling a re-raise. I usually will either raise that raise myself or just get out of the way. However, this is gonna be one of those very rare situations in which I am just gonna put in the 90 because we're pretty deep here and also I didn't feel like the button was gonna squeeze me. And that's what ends up happening. I put in the 90 and the button does indeed just complete. So three ways here to a flop, which of course justifies my mediocre play before the flop as it comes down ace 10 deuce with a flush draw. He checks it over to me. It's not really a situation in which I would have a lot of bluffs. So I think a check here makes a lot of sense. Button checks it back. So we're off to a turn, which is the eight of hearts. This time the small blind leads for 105. And now that there's some flush draws as well as some more straight draws available, I think it does make sense to put in a raise. I could definitely be doing this with some hands like King Jack or King Queen of Spades. Who knows, just a ton of bluffs in this spot. So I race to 350. Button gets out of the way and the small blind makes the call. River comes with three of clubs and he checks it over to me. He's got around $3,000 behind at this point and the pot is just under a thousand. So it's a question of how much do we want to bet and try to target ace king. I highly doubt he's going to let it go at this point since there's so many available missed draws. So I make it $1,200. My opponent thinks it over for quite a while. Eventually he decides on a crying call. I flip it over. My opponent mucks his hand. So we get a nice value bet there on the river and crawl out of the hole a little bit, but not all the way before deciding to rack up and call it a night. Hope you guys enjoyed the hands. That was supposed to be kind of like a laid back one, three, maybe two, five session. Nothing too crazy, but uh, as you guys saw, it ended up being quite the opposite. I was into that five, five game for a whopping 11.2 K. That's right, $11,000 into a five, five game. I gotta say, it's probably only in Texas that you're gonna see some shit like that, right? Even more surprising than that probably is the fact that I was down four or 5K at one point and ended up only losing around $900. Ethan is still in there signing autographs, signing babies, giving out shirts or whatever Ethan does these days. I'm out here enjoying some fresh air. We've been uh, in there all day gambling it up. And I gotta say, it looks pretty nice out here. So I'll probably fly the drone to end this vlog. And yeah, after that, we're gonna go get some dinner. Next vlog that you guys are gonna see is gonna be from our live stream here tomorrow night, which is a 510 uncapped. I predict that will be the biggest game we'll play the whole time we're here. Actually, it's not even a prediction. It's pretty much a fact unless something terrible happens. So yeah, stay tuned for that next vlog because it should be a lot of action. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'll see you guys next time. Good luck at the tables. Peace.